For the A6, know the following variable resistors. Number one, thermistor. It measures the temperature of liquid and air. Most common types are NTC, negative temperature coefficient. This means that as temperature increases, the sensor's resistance decreases. Once again, as temperature increases, the sensor's resistance decreases. Engine coolant temperature sensor, ECT, and intake air temperature sensor, IAT, are common thermistors. A thermistor is used as an input for the temperature gauge. Number two, piezo resistive sensors. These measure how much pressure is applied. The resistance of the sensor changes as pressure is applied to the sensing material. The oil pressure sending unit is a piezo resistor used for the oil pressure gauge. Number three, potentiometer, a three wire mechanical variable resistor. It measures position. It could be the position of the throttle plate, could be the position of the fuel level float as examples. The fuel level sending unit is used for the fuel level gauge. These three variable resistors are also known as sending units. The fuel level sender can also be a rheostat. And that brings us to number four, the rheostat. It uses position to regulate the strength of an electrical current. The most common rheostat is the instrument panel lighting switch. The brightness of the instrument panel changes based on the position of the rheostat. The last variable resistor is the photoresistor, aka photocell. Its resistance changes based on the amount of light entering. These are used in many automatic lighting applications. Know that a photoresistor can be used as an input to automatically dim or brighten the instrument panel lighting. There's two more types of sensors that give inputs to the instrument cluster. They monitor the speed of a component and are inputs to the speedometer or tachometer if your cluster has one. The two sensor types are a permanent magnet generator, aka magnetic pulse generator, and a Hall effect sensor. They both work in conjunction with a reluctor wheel, also known as a timing disc, pulse wheel, or tooth wheel. They look identical. The difference is a Hall effect sensor produces a digital signal and has three wires. The PM generator creates an AC voltage signal that must be converted by an analog to digital converter. Vehicle speed sensors, crankshaft position sensors, and camshaft position sensors are common types. Know how to diagnose all of these sensors? The A6 is going to ask general questions regarding these sensors. It'll ask something like, what type of sending unit is used for the temperature gauge? In the old Technician A, Technician B style of questions, they would have asked something like, Technician A says oscilloscopes can be used to retrieve data trouble codes. Technician B says oscilloscopes can be used to view live sensor data at the sensor. Which technician is correct? Moving on to instrument cluster troubleshooting. Know that modern instrument clusters have diagnostic capabilities you can use a scan tool or the instrument cluster itself to retrieve instrument cluster trouble codes. Know that the sending unit inputs can be transmitted directly to the instrument cluster or transmitted on the data bus to the BCM, then to the instrument cluster. Two common instrument cluster issues are a non-operating gauge or bulb issues. For gauge issues, scan for a DTC. Know that on modern vehicles, you can actuate an individual gauge using a scan tool with bidirectional controls. This helps isolate the circuit. Older vehicles, electromechanical clusters, have a cluster self-test. 
Press and hold the triple odometer button. Insert the key and put it in the run position. Keep holding the button until the word test comes out. And there it is, let go. Gauges are sweeping. Next you can do a bulb test. And if we continue, we can see data trouble codes. None at the moment. Note the other forms of troubleshooting the gauge, which are to disconnect the sending unit's connector and grounding the connector to chassis ground with a fused jumper. Bulb issues are a bulb not turning on when it's supposed to, or a bulb staying on all the time. A bulb staying on the time usually has a short to ground in the circuit. A bulb that does not operate can have an open in the circuit or the bulb itself can be blown. You can easily see if the bulb is operating during the prove out test. Prove out test, ignition key is set to the run position and there are your bulbs. The turn indicator lights will not show during the prove out test. Some vehicles require that the ignition be in the start position. If a problem with an instrument cluster is found, it is replaced, not repaired. And that about covers everything you should know regarding instrument clusters and computer inputs for the ASC A6. There's so much to cover in this area, but this is the meat and potatoes of what you should know. See you guys in the next video.